Hello there, and welcome. Today we are performing a scalp examination on our model here. So before we get into the examination, we've already sanitized our hands and we want to ask the patient for their name and date of birth and our model is not a real person today so we are just going to answer for them very good and I like to ask is that your preferred name and how do you like to be addressed as well Good. And next, we will ask our patient if we have consent to do the examination. And for this examination, we are going to be taking a little look at the hairline all around the head. We'll be looking at the hair itself, the quality, the strength of it, if there's any shedding. We will also be taking a look at the scalp. We'll look at the part, we'll keep parting the hair and checking the skin of the head for any abnormalities as well. And we do indeed have consent to examine. So we're gonna get started. Now, what I like to do first is we are going to take a wide tooth comb and we're going to comb out our patient's hair and we do this because it makes this examination easier even though people often comb or brush their hair before they come we have such a thing as wind or movement so it's nice to just run through it again and it also helps relax the client as well i say client when i mean patient yes kind of they're a client but patient's a better term so this particular patient has been complaining of some itching and burning of the scalp and they've noticed a little bit of a rash on the back of their neck but it is not red and it is a little bit sensitive to temperature so when they get in the shower it it does burn a bit under the hot water So we're going to investigate what could be going on. So the first thing that I'm thinking of when we are talking about rashes and itchiness is that possibly might, we might be dealing with a contact dermatitis. So we want to take a look at that and if that is present then we want to talk about possible allergens and get that resolved. Okay, so I am just going to check that the hair is sufficiently combed. This can almost look and feel like a little massage. to start with checking the hairline. Now our model here, I'm just going to move them a little bit. So I'm just going to take a clip here and just pin the hair back away from the face. And 
And so we're going to take a look at the hairline. here look more at the front of their head so our model here has a very nice hairline here it's very straight and it is not receding and not seeing any of those bumps they were talking about and I'm not feeling any Doing a little bit of palpation here on one side and then the other. A little bit of palpation here. As well as on the other side. Now, something to take into account is that a lot of skin and scalp conditions can exist not on the front or the back of the head but more on the side and behind the ears we're just going to take a little look behind the ears here i'm just going to look for any rashes or lesions tend to be a big one back here as well. We can also look in the hairline for any sort of infestation. And I'm just going to keep going till we get to the back of the head. Make sure that I am palpating here as well. Okay. It. And then let's take a little look at the other side here. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out. We're going to look at the hairline. Okay, and then let's pull this back as best as we can. We're not going for pretty here. We're going for how we can best see everything and we will be also combing the hair back out at the end. We're just taking a look here and looking behind the ear. As well as the So for the most part, I do not feel any abnormalities, I'm not feeling any bumps, not seeing any redness. So you just look at the front of the head here, just double check. looking at the hair itself. So, just running my fingers through the hair and doing just a little pull test here. See if there is any sign of shedding. If we have to start looking for signs of alopecia any hair shedding, any loss, any thinning of the hair. And while I'm pulling on the hair, I'm getting maybe one or two hairs, maybe none at all. 
so the hairs are pretty secure on there if we had seen perhaps 10 hairs while we run our fingers through the hair then then that's when we start thinking about alopecia but not seeing any shedding and the hair itself is thick and it's not coarse but it's not fine either it's right in the middle it is soft to the touch as I'm feeling it it is neither oily or dry at the top but there is some dryness at the bottom which is pretty common I'm gonna do some hair strength tests here where I am looking at how strong the hair is and I'm also going to be very gently tugging on it to see how secure it is on the head and if we catch if we catch a stray hair if we get a hair that has shed then we can test that hair strength a little bit better these hairs are pretty anchored on there okay so we have a little hair here wrap it around and pull on it until it snaps and that took a good amount of force to snap So overall, the hair is pretty secure on the head and it is quite strong which is qualities I would expect from this particular type of hair Okay. So now let's start looking at the actual scalp So I'm going to start right here like this Maybe I'll come in like this so you can see a little bit easier and we are just going to part the hair in the middle now I have quite a few different combs to help me I also have a magnifying glass and I have a light so that if we find anything that we need to investigate a little further then we have the tools to do so now this hair doesn't want to stay put very well so we are going to just clip that so that we can get a more even part these don't have to be pin straight but we want it pretty straight So this part is not very wide so I don't think we're having any hair loss along the part here so we are looking at the skin of the scalp 
we are going to be looking for things like contact dermatitis. We'll look for infestation. We'll look for nits. We will look for signs of seborrheic dermatitis. We'll look for scalp psoriasis. This time, we have found just a little fuzzy, just a little fuzzy, a little ball of string. Okay. And now we're going to make another parting. little neater. There we go. And his hair is a little less wily than the original parting, but I'm going to take another clip. scalp seems to be clear. I'm not seeing any signs of infection. I'm not seeing any signs of a rash. just going to keep going like this. And checking the scalp. Taking about a half inch section at a time. colored your hair or you've done it yourself, you will probably be quite adept at this. Good. Okay. Might have to grab another clip. We're starting to get a lot of hair here. Take the clips that we have. I'm going to pull those out. And then we're going to clip this back. There. Just like that. Let's take a look.
we will also be checking the other side as well as the back so we'll do our best to get behind the ear as our as our guideline right here something else that might be something. So let's take our clip here. See if we can capture all this hair. We can indeed. So let's turn a little bit. And then something right here. Okay, so we have isolated that little abnormality and we are going to take the magnifying glass and we're going to have a look. Sometimes the magnifying glass can be a little little goofy. Sometimes it works if you put the light right through it. Like this. Sometimes it's easier to put the light on it from the other direction. model here has another little fuzzy. It's a lot of fuzzies on this model. So we're just going to pull that away. Okay, there don't seem to be any more fuzzies there. Finish off this side. part the hair. There we go. I'm going to try to do my best to keep the hair from tangling, but to a point, there's only so much we can do here. extra care when we when we comb the hair after the examination okay. then we'll start on this side so let's pin this back and this is going to be a little bit harder to see so um, let's see if we can turn this just like this. That should be a little bit easier. And let's take a look. So 
so far what I've noticed is none of the parts are very wide, which is good. There is a touch of erythema on the scalp, but that in and of itself is just more of a flag, something to look out for. Some people can get redness in the scalp due to stress or lack of sleep, or some people are chronic scalp itchers. They fidget by, by itching their scalp. So that's just something to keep in mind. Doesn't necessarily mean anything in and of itself, it's just more something we want to keep an eye on. Might have to get another clip here. Just go ahead and grab that. third clip here. <laughs> Let's stay in. So, originally, we were looking out for signs of contact dermatitis. And Besides the redness, I so far have not seen any other symptoms. We might be looking for scalp flaking or peeling, the rash, the redness. But so far, we haven't seen any of that. Just the redness. Okay. And we are almost finished. So I'm going to tilt that just a little bit so that we can see this last couple of parts. looking pretty good. So now we will be taking a look at the back of the head and maybe maybe we will be brushing this out a little bit. be gentle whether someone is tender-headed or not nobody likes their hair getting pulled on so we want to be conscientious about combing the hair I am going 
going to start by looking at the crown of the head here. So, on our model, as she is not human, her hair doesn't quite have the crown, the little whirl at the back like many people do. And that's fine. So, I'm gonna just part the hair here so that I know what I'm looking at or where the boundaries are, rather. job a little easier, so I'll just do that on the other side as well. Maybe we'll make this a little more secure. Actually, let's see. There. more of a, an Edwardian pompadour style, but now the hair is not in front of their eyes, and we have better boundaries of where we're looking at. So let's just start at the top here. Let's take a little bit of hair. Pull it forward. So generally, the hair on the back of the head is thicker. my third clip so that our hair bases don't flip back. There. And we have a good look. We're getting a little lower. Let's go ahead and raise up our model. A little easier to see.
with these real wide areas. It may even be a good idea to to divide these in half and then look at each half section Looks like we are about halfway down the head, I would say. As we're getting to the bottom, we're going to raise our model up a little bit more. Then we can see this bottom part. together in the end. Let's see if we have the ability to get that one. Okay. Just barely, but I think it'll work. And we have one last section. Not as much air. There we go. 
there's our last section. So, let's see if we can fit just a little bit more in here. Just a little bit more. We'll see if that holds. <laughs> we check underneath once more. Right. And we can let down the hair. And most likely it'll be a bit of a mess when we do take it down. Bring it down a little bit. And let's come back around so that our model is in front. So, the hair was not nearly as, as tousled <laughs> as it was before. But we are going to run through the hair with our wide tooth comb first. There are really any knots or tangles, which is good. I want to avoid that as much as possible. It's not fun for anybody. So, as we are brushing the hair, we can talk a little bit about what we found. Now, with our patient here, Really, the only thing we found was a bit of redness. Did not find any rash, and itching is something that we can't discount just by examination something that the patient feels. And as far as burning, we might get some discoloration, but again, that's something mostly the patient feels. The temperature of the scalp is pretty normal. So that does not However, rule out that we are not dealing with contact dermatitis. There's definitely no psoriasis and no infection. There wasn't any swelling of the lymph nodes, which might suggest an infection. No infestation, which may, which might have explained the itching and even the redness if we're scratching. So, what we can do from here is we can go through hair products that are used and even if we wear any hats or 
some people spray perfume or fragrance in their hair and we can talk about that and there are so many irritants in our hair care and beauty products and many of us do become more and more sensitive to them and sometimes allergic so we can talk about what's in them and you can talk about switching to more hypoallergenic alternatives and see if anything clears up and just have an open line of communication as far as you know, do they see any improvement by taking out a hairspray? Do they see any improvement when they're no longer spraying their hair with fragrance? Do they see any improvement if they're no longer wearing wool hats? Something of that sort. And in addition to that, are their symptoms worsening as well? So if they are, then we want to have them come right back in and do another another examination. The hair is combed through, and we did have a parting. Some hair doesn't like to be parted one way or another. You can try to train your hair, but sometimes it just does not train. the best that we can. And I'm just going to turn our model so I can make sure. Yeah, that was, that was about how they came in. So, we will let them leave with, with shiny combed through. like to thank you so much for watching this scalp examination and I'd like to thank our wonderful model here for allowing us to look at their scalp, their hair, and do this examination. So, I hope you have a whale of a day and a good rest of your night. Thank you. Goodbye now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I create primarily medical alternative medicine slash pseudoscience personal attention ASMR roleplays. If you want to check out a specific category of my videos, my channel playlists have everything from sci-fi to historical to even fantasy videos. If you want to support my work, consider checking out my Patreon profile in the description box 